why Disney blacklisted Star Wars theory. Then eventually, the stories. you'll probably have your own booth then at Star Wars Celebration at one point. No, man, they hate me. What do you mean? Oh, really? Why they <laughs> yeah, hate? they don't like me. Why, yeah, why they not? Don't like me. Yeah, right. Disney, Disney and them, they don't, they don't like me. Yeah, but they bullied you a little bit, right? For, uh, for the I Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, that was fucking disgusting. I, I, I completely relate yeah. it because I was watching that with the same tears in my eyes, dude. Yeah, yeah, no. Um... Bro, how can Disney not like Star Wars Theory? He was like the biggest proponent for like a lot of the modern day Star Wars show. You know, he tried to see like the brighter side or like the positives that came out of uh, like a lot of the media. I just like straight watched it and just shit on it. I thought it was just bad. But at least Star Wars theory was like trying to take the side of Disney or whatever. And they just blacklisted him or whatever. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, they, they blacklisted me. Uh, I know a bunch. I know a bunch of guys that wanted to work with me, like big companies, uh -huh. and um, they were like, <laughs> they were like, we we don't know what happened. We, you know, we asked Disney, and they uh, they don't want to work with you. Oh my god! Um, yeah, and I don't know. I know another guy, one of my close buddies, mm -hmm. and he knows this dude that actually handles the whole blacklist. Apparently, uh -huh. there's an actual blacklist of like we don't work with these influencers. Oh my goodness what he told me and he's like oh is star wars theory on that list and he's like yeah of course <laughs> so, 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 yeah of I'm course like, yeah, that's okay you know it's, at least you're it's... doing something right um yeah i mean i just feel like i'm pretty outspoken mm -hmm. so i'm not gonna like everything they make and at the end of the day i'm really loyal to george lucas and what mm -hmm. he made yeah. uh so yeah i feel like if that pisses them off and i don't you know that, that doesn't get me a free movie ticket or or early access or whatever that's no, okay whatever, whatever. i'll i'll buy it like everyone else yeah. you know i'll wait until it releases <laughs> like everyone else exactly but yeah so it's it is what it is but yeah no i'll we'll never have a booth there. <laughs> oh wow fuck that. i didn't know so you're the you're the you're the true people's champ then huh you got i mean your your following is bigger than most of what uh, disney puts out themselves on the on this platform yeah i think uh, star wars theory has like the biggest star wars following like on YouTube, I think. I don't know exactly, but yeah, I watch a lot of his shit. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's that's actually my short term goal is to overtake um, in subs their YouTube channel. Yeah, you can, yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> yeah. Don't piss off. Don't piss us off. You know, don't yeah. piss off the fans. Yeah. You could come back yeah. and bite you. Yeah, and then maybe at one point you can buy Star Wars Celebration. It's... Oh my God, no. <laughs> I mean, look, if I get to the point where I have like, Whatever Star Wars is worth, and I can easily buy it, uh -huh. I would love to. I would love to buy it. Would you I get would George Lucas on as an advisor, bro? There's no way Star Wars Theory would be able to buy the Star Wars license from Disney. Like, what is that? What he's talking about? Maybe I'm. I don't know. Oh, I mean, whatever George wants to do, but I don't <laughs> even know if he wants to be part of it anymore. Well, after what it's turned into, maybe not. Yeah, I mean, shit, bro. If I was George and I've seen like everything that they did to my universe that I created, I wouldn't want to have anything to do with it either. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, know, I know people who know him mm -hmm. and they say that he's not too happy with uh, yeah. the stuff that's been coming, like the sequel trilogy stuff. Oh, dang. No, I can imagine. Like the first one, episode seven was a good start, but then eight and nine. Oh, man. Well, he even had his candid opinions about seven. Yeah, he was yeah. Talking about how it was like a rehash of what he's done, and it mm -hmm. wasn't really new or refreshing. And then, I mean, episode eight and nine, he wasn't even at the premiere. So, no. No, I can imagine. Yeah, when it's your baby, and you hand it off for what four billion? Yeah, four billion and yeah. like stock options and stuff. Yeah, so. right. And then you see it turn I into mean, that, you know. Bro, why has George Lucas never been on Shark Tank? If he's got, if he's just chilling on four billion, like what? <laughs> I would totally watch that episode of Shark Tank if I were to see George Lucas on there. I'd be like, "What?" <laughs> just goes into a fucking yeah, it's, it's... yeah, and it, it's you know a lot of people like it and enjoy it, and that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for them, but at the same time, there's a lot of people that don't, and so it's you kind of have to find this like happy medium um, of like just pick and choose the stuff that you do enjoy from Star Wars that they make, and the rest of it you kind of go away, whatever. Yeah. Right, and there's so much material that you can basically pick and choose what what is actually good. Yeah, 
and you that's just, the good thing yeah so. you still have to sift through the bad stuff a little bit like do you still yeah a little do you yeah. cover like on your channel do you cover stuff that you don't really want to cover but you know that general population like the general star wars fans want to see it no i stopped yeah oh, really I, stopped. It hurts, I was right? covering yeah like i was covering the comics um mm -hmm. you know, adamantly religiously uh, the vader comics and then it started going in the direction i was like it doesn't really make sense and then it mm -hmm. just became kind of weird and diluted and um, they were pushing agendas and this and that mm -hmm. and i'm like okay well this doesn't really feel authentic anymore right so i stopped covering the comics and then the movies did their own thing so he's watching or making videos about the comics i didn't even know that they were making star wars comics or whatever and if they're even you know pushing certain agendas in comics because they do that in movies and they do that in shows like the TV shows or whatever, like on Disney plus and whatnot to, to also extend that into, into the comics. Like what? Like star Wars will always have the potential to be like something awesome, but because the writers or whoever feel the need to, you know, interject their own little two cents about some social justice issue and make that thing the forefront, even to the detriment of your immersion in the media. It's like Star Wars will never be good. Where they, they veered off a path. So, you know, then there's these High Republic books that came out and I, I tried reading it, but it was very boring for me mm -hmm. and maybe um, I didn't give it the proper chance, but yeah, I just kind of, there's stuff I just don't cover that I know would, of course, be interesting for a lot of people mm -hmm. um, who, who do want to know what I think about it or have it explained or something in my mm -hmm. way. I just can't seem to um, get into that. it. Huh? Yeah, you can't No, get man. What, what, what yeah. I think is like Star Wars needs some new blood. But new blood from people that have been in the space for most of their lives, like guys like you, you you're very familiar with the lore and you know exactly what the fans would like to see because you're a fan yourself. But you're also yeah. smart enough to understand the overlying complications of, of small changes, what you know down the line, like story wise. So, yeah, I mean, they decanonized all of the Star Wars legend uh, novels, uh, books, or whatever, and there's like hundreds of books that you know expanded the star wars universe that they easily could have made movies after um but but yeah they just chose to just be like oh no uh yeah that's not part of canon anymore we'll just take those out and a lot of good characters in movies or stories have came out of those books that they just choose not to acknowledge anymore so, yeah, but I never understood like companies like Disney or Nintendo or whatever. They don't just get a group of like super fans together for as lore management managers and just run all the ideas past them just to make sure that it's it's still authentic within the universe that they built early on. But they, they always want to design narratives and just change it. And it's weird, though, you know, that can be dangerous, too, is if you have mm -hmm. a whole bunch of super fans, because then you'll create a, a story that <clears throat> is just sort of fan servicey, which is you know cool but in mm -hmm. the overall aspect of um evolving the characters and stories i feel like is kind of meh, unnecessary that's also a good point yeah uh too much too video game like Could so be, there's yeah. I, again i feel like there's like a uh that, that's a good point but i would like to hear some examples of that happening in the star wars universe where something was perceived as overly fan servicey but i don't know it didn't perform well because it was over fan servicey versus the opposite which is nothing is fan servicey and nobody likes it so yeah happy medium right it's mm -hmm. but what they're doing is they're going completely the other way where they're just uh, in my opinion, tarnishing the the legacy characters that George created, yeah, and now um, kind of using using their own new characters to uh, shine, mm -hmm. taking the spotlight and putting it on them instead of passing the torch more respectfully or something, you know. Yeah, I would have liked yeah. to see that with seven, eight, and nine, but it's, it's yeah, me too. something completely different. 
Well, yeah, no, there was just no planning. Like, like the the directors weren't really communicating with each other, mm. from what we hear. Um, mm. You know, Daisy Ridley, who played Ray, she didn't even know who Ray was until near the end of the the ninth film. Yeah, this just seems like a lack of communication on everybody's part, um, and that's really sad. Um, yeah, because I've watched like a ton of Star Wars videos that like like go into like crazy detail and break down why every movie like just failed horribly like bad like the all the plot holes all the things that happened off screen versus on screen so many things were unsatisfying nothing made sense and it's like how were people how were just like like fans of star wars able to like break down a movie in like a couple weeks or whatever however long it took and make a video about it when the writers and directors had months and months, if not years, to create a story, like a good story. Like, how is that even possible? Right. Yeah, but I think that like, totally changed that, you know, many, many they times. They keep changing shit. Yeah. They keep changing shit. And it's like, well, you have, you know, the sequel trilogy, which is the most important thing. Don't you think there should be an overall outline? Right. And the and the books there, there are several books that cover uh, those episodes, right? Or potentially, yeah, the, you know. But they they got retconned. But I think those stories are way better. Which ones? The heir the, to the empire and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, like the yeah yeah. So the books that came out while George was in charge mm -hmm. uh, and owned Lucasfilm were just so much better of stories, mm -hmm. which I think is where they're going now because right. they have this massive like thirty year gap between right. episode six and seven, mm -hmm. so they can cover this whole myriad of different stories right. in there we're going back to tatooine oh boy back to the desert place i swear to god man if there's another star wars where the backdrop is fucking tatooine oh my god <laughs> so that that's good you got yeah, a big kinda, gap in there we can fill it up kind of um, what they did with rebels and uh you know Clo Clo clone wars yeah clone something. wars yeah. And all that stuff. yeah 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 because that's Which only the added to the lore exactly yeah yeah the people love those you know love those series oh dude so fun yeah so, so fun so and then now they got this you know thrawn coming in so yeah, that should be exciting he's like yeah he's like spock he's like the spock exactly of yeah. star wars exactly yeah, yeah i wonder what they're so. gonna do with ahsoka that's coming out pretty soon right oh it's gonna be badass because it's yeah. dave filoni he's like right, the mega yeah. fan yeah. and and he was trained by george so should be good fingers crossed fingers crossed man. fingers crossed <laughs> it's, it's gonna, gonna be okay be yeah. Yeah. Besides yeah. Star Wars, like you, you play some video games like Dra Dragon Ball Z. You watch that, and I love Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I play video games. I love movies. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy watching movies. Um, I like playing video games, like uh, story games, like God of War. Right. Yeah. Um, you know the new Jedi Survivor game that just came out. Really enjoyed that one as well. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, I really like a lot of story games and Good. some some Call of Duty and stuff too here and there. But right. Yeah. Yeah, that's so yeah. fun. Other than that. Yeah, it is still fun. Just hanging out with friends or playing video games. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I don't really go out much. I'm really introverted. Mm. Join the club, Star Wars Theory. Join the club. <laughs> so come to Thailand. They will, they will fix you in a month. You have no <laughs> really? choice. Yeah, I was very introverted as well. I was like staying at home all the time, playing video games when I was in Holland. So I was age 23, 24 years old. And then I came yeah. to Thailand and it's just nonstop going out and meeting people and and. People are so outgoing and friendly and talkative. So you'll get over that roadblock in, in a month. Because you'll you'll you have, don't no have choice. that in Vancouver. No, you don't does, have it does, in Holland either. So you have to get out. Does Eric ever talk about that? Like the, the yes. people here are just Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're very selective on who you keep in your circle. And of course you have to do that everywhere because not everybody's a good person. But you have yeah. to you know, if you want to be outgoing and talkative, um, then Thailand or some of the Asian countries, it's, it's just nonstop. So within a month or two, you're just completely over that introvertedness and you're the most outgoing uh, guy ever. Because I, I came here the same way and I can talk with everybody. Like when I went to the Olympia, yeah. people were like, dude, you're such a natural about talking with people. And I was like, yeah. well, 10 years ago, I was like this, 15 years ago. It's yeah. Just, need exposure therapy. Sort of say. Well, it's weird. Like it switches on if I'm at a convention or something mm -hmm. because I'm with like it feels like I'm with like close friends because we all like Star Wars. Right. And yeah. People, are, everyone's nice. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Out in out in the world, I kind of feel just um, like I don't really belong. Like I just feel different. Yeah. Just the way I think and and just 
you know, I don't know, introverted yeah. a little bit. Dang. Hey, guys. Then eventually. That was like really interesting. Why is he using this thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> oh man but no that's i had no idea star wars theory was um what do you call it blacklisted he, i thought he was like a huge proponent like for like a lot of the disney shit that came out that is freaking stupid on disney's part to to blacklist him i do not agree that's stupid but hopefully there's a bunch of good things down the road and you know, hopefully there's a lot of like, I don't know, brighter things coming out with Star Wars because currently there's like big fat goose egg. But this is just nice to, you know, just sit back and just chill and bullshit. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Later.